Okay. I am Professor Marilyn Dantico from the School of Politics and Global Studies. And I am here today to talk about my experience incorporating games into my upper division research methods course. Now this course is required, which makes students love it a lot. Um, and it is a course that was redesigned last semester. We um, involved a majority of the f department faculty in creating brief videos describing their research. So when we went into this semester, we were just sort of looking around to see what else might be available. And Tanya Wilson suggested that we might try games. I was reluctant having a negative response to the idea of games in a university course just instinctively. And I had used crossword puzzles as um, little study guide things in, in earlier courses. I'd never given them course credit, but I decided that I really didn't have anything to lose, so I thought we would give this a try. Um, one major difference was that we started incorporating different types of games. We expanded from just crossword puzzles to word search to scatter games to arcade games to Jeopardy to whatever we could get to work in the course. The other major change was that we attached points for course credit to the games. That was an effort to encourage people to use the games and it seems to have been effective. <clears throat> what the games provided me was an opportunity to get students a review of concepts or ideas to get highlights back to them before they took quizzes or exams. So I used, I, I sort of worked backwards from exam questions to creating game questions because I knew what I wanted students to learn. I wanted to let them know that these were the things I wanted them to know. <clears throat> and <clears throat> because I had taught the course back-to-back -back semesters, and the real difference between the courses was the inclusion of games, <clears throat> we were able to make some comparisons across semesters in terms of students' performance. The student enrollments were about the same. They were a little bit larger the second semester. Um, the exams were very similar. They were not identical, but they were very similar. And at the end of the, f um, basically, the midterm period, after students had completed the midterm and three games, what we found were <clears throat> that the highest score in the course was up six points. The mean, median, and mode in the course with the games were all up four points, while <clears throat> all of the other indicators that we had, standard deviation, the mean difficulty, were pretty stable across the, the two semesters. So what we found was an increase in student performance without any apparent decline in the difficulty of the material that they were getting. So uh, we scrambled very quickly to include games for the second half of the, of the term, and we added courses, excuse me, adding games during the semester required that we come up with a sort of creative solution to the question of how do we incorporate course credit because the syllabus had already been set up. So these games became extra credit games, but the students had obviously figured out that the games were useful tools to them. What we saw at the end of the semester at during the final exam was that the high score was up 2% when we included the games. The mean and median scores both increased. The mode was constant across the semesters, while the average difficulty remained the same. So the, the f one challenge, of course, is are you teaching to the test? And of course I'm teaching to the test, it's my test. So what would I do except teach the material that I want them to know? And 
So the exams reflect what I want students to know. The games reinforce the material that's presented in PowerPoints and in, uh, in, in their other readings for the course and in other online material. I would definitely use games again. I would hopefully give myself a little more lead time so that the games are better at directing students to where I want them to go and what I want them to understand. Um, and and that I, I think that is pretty easy. I think that's something that you learn very quickly after you work with games. I think this, the student response, and my very favorite response of students is what they didn't do. What they didn't do was ask me for study guides, which I find frustrating since I've already given them PowerPoints and lectures and videos and everything I can think of. So study guides I cannot imagine adding, although clearly as study guide substitutes, the games help students focus on material. Student response was um, positive. I, by positive, I mean no one, absolutely no one complained. And a lot of students said that they were enjoying them. In, in one instance where I just played a game because I wanted to see how it was working, I decided that I would post my time as a time to beat so that students would take, the, um, take this as something that was a real game, sort of uh, more um, in the vein of fun rather than necessarily coursework. Uh, so I would encourage people to try games. I don't think you need to make it a big part of your course, but I think if you find that it works, that <clears throat> you ought to use it and move forward with it.